Now let's have a look on the cells. We start with the fixed cells of connective tissues. The most common cell type that occurs in connective tissues is the so-called mother cell of connective tissue, which is the fibroblast. The shape is quite irregular and variable. Usually there are numerous cell processes. Okay. The nucleus is ellipsoid and the chromatin occurs mostly in the form of euchromatin, which is ac accessible for an active transcription because this cell is highly metabolically active. There is this rough endoplasmic reticulum surrounding the nucleus with the ribosomes on it. There is uh, the Golgi complex which prepares molecules for exocytosis. Occasionally you can find also secretory granules and of course they are mitochondria everywhere. So we have the nucleus, the granular endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi complex, and the secretory granules. These secretory granules undergo exocytosis and the fibroblasts contribute to production of extracellular matrix. So is the exocytosis of extracellular matrix precursors. If, if you hear the blast here in the word fibroblast, the term suggests that it's a metabolically active cell uh, that uh, undergoes also uh, cell divisions. So it's kind of active form. Okay, This can mature into a more resting form called fibrocyte. So usually the sides or represent the resting form of the cell. The shape is uh, it's, it's, it's usually spindle shaped. The nucleus is mostly made of heterochromatin, so it's dense in the microscope. Usually one of the end points of the nucleus as a sharp form and also the organelles necessary for proteosynthesis and exocytosis are less developed when compared to fibroblast. Another form into which fibroblasts might differentiate is a myofibroblast. Myo fibroblast. It's uh, really similar to the fibroblast. However, however, it uh, contains contractile myofilaments that are attached to dense plaques and dense bodies. And these contractile myofilaments run across the cytoplasm, giving the cell the ability to contract. These cells are quite important for wound retraction during the wound healing. So we do have these contractile. Maya.
filaments across the cell. Another common cell type in connective tissues is the fat cell called adipocyte. The adipocytes or fat cells occur in two forms in human body. The first form has uh, an eccentrically placed nucleus in the cell periphery. Mostly it's dense, made of heterochromatin. And the lipid droplet, there is a single large lipid droplet filling most of the cell interior. There are also mitochondria and other organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi complex. So we have the nucleus on the periphery, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, and mitochondria. However, there is a huge lipid droplet filling most of the cell. You call this uh, type an unilocular adipocyte and it occurs in white adipose tissue. Another type of fat cells has a nucleus somewhere closer to the center. It's more made of euchromatin, which is lighter. The organelles are still there. However, the major difference is that the lipid there are many lipid droplets of various size, hundreds, perhaps thousands of various lipid droplets. All over the cell. And the mitochondria are significantly more numerous compared to the unilocular type. So we have the nucleus and we have these many lipid droplets with their overall surface being much much larger than the surface of a single lipid droplet when you compare the same volume of lipid which makes it much more accessible for formation and growth, but also for resorption and metabolic use of these lipids. And you have these many mitochondria where these uh, lipid, lipids are utilized, but the chemical energy is directly transformed to heat not, it's not used uh, for oxidative phosphorylation and ATP production, but rather for direct heat production. Uh, this process is called non shivering non shivering thermogenesis. These uh, types of adipocytes are called multilocular. and they occur in brown adipose tissue. Other cell type uh, that we should mention uh, is reticulocyte. The, 
these reticular sites have many broad processes of various length, which might be branched. And then they kind of resemble the fibroblasts. However, they are forming a three-dimensional network with their processes. The nucleus contains mostly euchromatin and we have the obligatory organelles for synthesis, so the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi complex preparing the molecules for exocytosis. But the point here is that these cells are producing um, reticular fibers that are stretched among the cell processes. They embrace the fibers with their cell processes. So we have the nucleus here, the processes, and the reticular fibers. Another cell type um, is the melanocyte. You may call it pigment cell. Such as the cells on the basal layer of the epidermis. They have a cell body from which uh, cell processes are radiating so sometimes they are compared to octopus okay so the endoplasmic reticulum is there in the Golgi but what makes it the C these cells uh, characteristic is the presence of organelles laden with uh, uh, pigments called melanins. And these organelles are called melanosomes. The melanosomes are entering the cell processes and then they undergo exocytosis so they are released into the these pigment granules are released into the extracellular space from which they could be uh, they could be swallowed by other surrounding cells so we have the nucleus the rough or granular endoplasmic reticulum the Golgi complex and the melanosomes containing a variety of pigments and the genus pigments called melanins which undergo exocytosis into the tissues. The activity of these cells is by the way stimulated by melanocyte stimulating hormone released from the adenohypophysis.